All right, hello, fun, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the modular segmented SRBs mod, which is being made by form user Linux Guru Gamer. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game, as well as the name would imply, solid rocket boosters, which are modular, so you can build them as big or small as you desire, which is pretty wonderful. So let's uh, jump into the vehicle assembly building and have a look at what we do get. Now I should mention right off the bat here, this does have a mod dependency of the Space Tux library for it to function properly, but with it installed, you get all the fun parts you'll see here today. So let's grab a yeah, Mark One lander can for size comparison and then turn on our mod filter just leaving on modular segmented SRBs and start in an unusual place for a solid rocket booster, the fuel tanks category. These are of course modular solid rocket boosters. So you have your individual engine pieces that then attach to your individual fuel tanks much like a normal rocket but instead now just being for all that raw power of a solid rocket booster and it's wonderful now unlike our usual part reviews where i look at each part individually these are really all kind of a lot of the same parts just in different size variants so i'm going to be talking about them that way so in this regard for the fuel tanks you can see we have five which each one being a size variant starting at the 0.625 meter tank, then going up to 1.25 meters, then 1.875 meters, then 2.5 meters, and finally 3.75 meters for these fuel tanks, each of them holding a variable amount of segmented solid fuel, as that is the big resource for this pack. But they get a bit more complicated. If I actually pop on the 3.75 meter tank, for instance, it's a big and kind of a simple model, but hey, it's it serves its purpose. And uh, it has more than just this one tank. Each of these different size variants then has length variants. So the 3.75 meter tank, oh boy, if we zoom out, we're gonna need it, can actually go from this standard six meter tank up to a 12 meter tank to a 24 meter tank holding oh boy a whole lot of solid fuel here which is pretty cool so that's why it's hard to tell you the numbers for each of these just because they are variable depending on the size of the tank as well as the length you go with but just to quickly go over the different lengths for the 2.5 meter we then have a 4 meter a 6 and 8 meter and then for the 1.875 meter, we start at 3 meter length, then go to 6 and 12. For the 1.25, we have 2, 4, and 8. And finally, for the 0.625 meter tank, we have 1 meter, 2 meters, and 4 meters. And of course, being modular SRBs, you can, well, stack them. There you go, you have an even longer solid rocket booster, and these will connect. That's why you may notice here on the info panel, we actually have three different solid fuels. Now the segmented solid fuel is the important one. That is your actual fuel that you can adjust here in the VAB, and it is what you're gonna see waste away once you ignite the engine. The other two seem to be uh, sort of a back end type of resource that I, I guess because of the modular nature and since it has to calculate this whole stack basically as one solid rocket boost, it seems to, in the back end, combine them all through these two categories. I don't quite know how it works exactly. It's actually explained a bit better on the mod page, but I, it just works. That's all I know. But yes, uh, so you can ignore that and pay attention to the segmented solid fuel. But that is, of course, the fuel tanks out of the way. So let's zoom back on in and head down next to the engine category, where again, we have different size variants, but this time of three different engines. So let's take a look at the first of these three engines, the Atlas variant, which uh, of course has those same uh, five uh, sizes of 6.25, 1.25, 1.875, and 2.5, and finally 3.75 meters. Now, they do have a variable thrust depending on, of course, the size of the engine itself, as well 
as the fuel attached to it. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Uh, but this also does have, on this particular engine, a gimbling of 5 degrees. And if we take a look here, it does actually have its own variants of either just the motor or a segmented one with its own fuel, which of course again can also attach more fuel onto, which is quite nice to have that, and that modeling on that does look quite good. I do very much enjoy it. Now the next of the three engines is the Minuteman variant, which this one once again has the 0.625, 1.25, 2. or 1.875, then 2.5, and finally, 3.75 meter variants. This one having less gimbling on the engine of only 4 degrees, uh, but once again does have the two different variants of it, either just the motor version or the version with a solid fuel tank attached, which is quite nice. Not, not quite as nice looking as the previous one, but, you know, usable. And then finally, we have the final engine variant, the STS, which once more does come in the sizes of 0 0.625, 1.25, 1.875, 2.5, 1 and 3.75 meters. This one having the least control of the three with only two degrees of a gimbling vectoring range. And once again, does have the two variants, as you can see here, of either just the motor or the motor with a fuel segment. And this one, by far the most detailed of the three fuel segments. Uh, very nice, I actually really do like the look of that one. It is quite cool looking. Now, as for the whole, hmm, thrust and ISP numbers that I normally talk about, as I said when we got to the engine category, it's all variable. Depending on which size of engine you go with, as well as the size and length and number of solid fuel segment tanks you add on, that is what is going to determine your ISP, your thrust, your thrust to weight ratio and burn time for these engines. So it's not something I can really talk about in here, and it's even something that the VAB can't calculate. You aren't going to be able to know those numbers until you actually go to the launch pad and hit launch. So if you are someone who does like having all those numbers when you're putting together your rocket, you're going to want to build and design your solid rocket booster and then go test it out on the launch pad real quick to get those before attaching it to your overall mission rocket. A little bit inconvenient there, but considering how this is working with, you know, trying to calculate all these variable sized segments and engines, it's understandable in my opinion, and frankly, it's solid rocket boosters. If it's not enough power, just add more. That's sort of the rule of Kerbal Space Program. Go with it. But hey, that's not all we get here. It's not just engines and fuel tanks. If we head all the way down to the utility category, we also have some end caps and nose cones. We'll start with the nose cones, which once again are in those 0.625 meter, 1.25, 1.875, 2.5, and finally 3.75 meter size categories. And these ones have a bit more to them though, as they do have a built-in data transmitter. They are an unmanned command pod and have a 30 electric charge to power the whole thing, but are also parachutes and have a Separatron motor to help push it away safely from your main rocket with 48 of fuel inside those Separatrons. And as you can see here, a good little nose cone for you to use. And uh, if we actually do right click here, it too has variants of either just a nose cone or a nose cone with a one meter section of fuel which is pretty cool. So again, just another fun option and a <laughs> additional calculation for your engines to have to figure out their thrust, but all in all, quite nice. Now, after that, we have the final of the parts, and that is the end cap. And these finally and once more come in the 0 0.625, 1.25, 1.875, 2.5, and 3.75 meter size categories here. Now these have no stats to them whatsoever. They are just end caps for you to pop onto your solid rocket boosters. And if we pop them on there, it's uh, it's a good looking end cap. Yeah, you know, it's got nice detailing to it. I like the good dome and all. And uh, all in all, looks nice. I'm surprised that of all the parts with variants for extra fuel that they don't have variants, they are purely just 
end caps. But hey, there you go. You can have it in all those fun different size varieties to make just the right solid rocket booster you're wanting to create. So let's actually head out to the launch pad and uh, take a look at a just monstrosity of an only solid rocket booster powered rocket that I built earlier, which, um, yes, is also relying off of the control of the nose cones, which even though they are unmanned command pods, so we can launch, they aren't the greatest, even though I actually do have it hidden inside here in SAS module. I, they can't turn it on, so yeah. But we have lots of raw, solid rocket boostery power, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. We've got the large 3.75 meter segment in here with the full 24 meter length, the gigantic nose cone, and some of these smaller 1.875 meter ones down there. No need to throttle up or down because, of course, it's a solid rocket booster, so so let's fire, and away it goes, slowly but surely, because, well, this is super heavy, like really, really heavy, and all those little calculations are going on in the back end so that this thing can actually properly calculate all the thrust that it is producing from the segment through to the engine to actually make it function like a solid rocket booster normally does in the game. It makes it a little bit more complicated, but not really a problem. It functions perfectly fine, and like I said, I've been having a lot of fun with this thing. Oh boy, I didn't put that in the right spot. That's about to overheat and explode. Wait, 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 those ones might... You know what? I'm just going to clear those off. Never mind, they exploded anyway. It's cool. Awesome. I, yeah, I should have tested this rocket beforehand. I did not. I did not. But yes, it's a fun little mod with some cool parts to let you make just the right solid rocket booster that you're wanting to have for your particular mission. Whether it be some gigantic monstrosity like this, which is now a glorified lawn dart coming in, oh god, on a ballistic trajectory destroyed my launch pad from the looks of it, but, or you know, a more sensible solid rocket booster for an actual mission on a workable rocket. But that is going to be it for today. If you'd like to check out this mod for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description, as per usual. Oh, wow, that didn't explode. Wow, that's a sturdy nose cone. But that's that's going to be it for today. What a thing to end on. So I uh, hope you all have enjoyed. You do come back for the next, but until that time, thank you for watching. And as always, have a good one. There it goes, that, the Sepatron worked. Yeah, that is a sturdy nose cone. Later, folks!